Hey, what's going on? Jason here, and I want to give you a little bit of my background, a little bit about how I got into self-publishing, uh, touch on a little bit about my life before I got into the publishing business, and uh, just sort of give you a, a background on uh, where I've been and uh, how I got to where I am today. So, you know, before I got started in self-publishing, um, you know, I would have never, first of all, I would have never even imagined that I would have even been involved in self-publishing or in the publishing business alone. Growing up, I, I wasn't a huge reader. Um, you know, I wasn't someone who was going to, to read a ton of books. And this is, you know, before I turned 18, before I really entered into my adult life, I wasn't a big reader. I wasn't, you know, someone who was a great student. I didn't enjoy going to school. Um, you know, I was more interested in, you know, athletics, playing outside, you know, playing video games, you know, the normal type of stuff uh, a kid growing up in the 80s and, and 90s uh, tended to enjoy. So I wasn't someone who uh, was destined or, you know, handed this realm or this role of uh, becoming an expert in self publishing. You know, my parents. Uh, they did not even graduate from high school. I was primarily raised by my grandmother, who uh, was a hard worker, but, I mean, she was not a highly educated person as well. I mean, they were all smart. They were all very driven and have all become successful in their lives. And But this wasn't, you know, something of a path that I was destined to be on. Um, and so when I turned 18... I graduated high school by the skin of my teeth. I mean, I barely made it out. And uh, I toiled around for around a year trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do. You know, I really wasn't interested in going to college. I wasn't, you know, too much interested in doing much. You know, I was pretty much lost at that point in my life. So I took a couple of jobs, odd, you know, odd jobs and was making some money here and there, uh, essentially trying to get out of my grandmother's home. You know, I wanted to get my own apartment, start my own life, and do my own thing. And I didn't really have the knowledge or the tools or the mentorship available to me at that time in order to make that happen. So I uh, ended up getting a call one day, kind of a random call, uh, in I believe 2001, February of 2001, uh, from an army recruiter. And I'm sorry, February 2002. So this is post 9-11 from an army recruiter who basically said, hey, are you gainfully employed? What are you doing with your life? You know, I said, hey, man, I'm not doing much. You know, he's like, well, can I come over and talk to you about the army? And I'd always in the back of my mind wanted to, to do something in the military and especially after 9-11. You know, I wanted to uh, make myself useful as a 19 year old kid, someone who didn't have a lot of educational background or, or any really doing anything with my life I really wanted to do something useful I wanted to do something productive um, I wanted to do something cool and so the army recruiter comes over we sit down in my grandma's kitchen and within a couple of hours or maybe even an hour I had signed up to go uh, to basic training in Fort Benning Georgia so this is February 2002 and uh, a month later I was on an airplane and I think that was for the first time the first time I'd ever flown uh, to Fort Benning Georgia and so uh, I was terrified I didn't have a lot of military knowledge I, I you know I don't come from a military family you know, I'd watched all the movies like Full Metal Jacket and it really scared me. And uh, so I get off the airplane. I think it's like by the time I finally got to Atlanta, it was pretty late in the evening. A bus comes to pick us up at around 10 p.m., maybe 11 p.m. We get into Fort Benning at around 2 or 3 a.m. And, you know, they you know scare the hell out of us. You know, they do like a shakedown, make sure you don't have any contraband. And uh, we go to this bunk, you know, they send us to the barracks and, you know, uh, it was like 2 or 3 a.m., I don't know what time it was, wake us up maybe around 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, didn't even sleep, and 
that was the beginning of my military career. I was really a fish out of water, uh, but I endured that and um, went into um, you know Fort Benning, did my basic training, then I went down to uh, South Carolina, uh, did what's called uh, advanced individual training, which basically give you a job. And uh, I joined the Army Reserves. You know, I wasn't I wasn't someone who uh, was really ready to go full time active duty Army. Um, and so I joined the Reserve program and um, got back home. So I successfully completed all my training. I was pretty pretty happy with all that. You know, I made some cool friends, had some great experiences, learned a lot, um, learned a lot of practical knowledge, dealt with a lot of challenges dealt with the difficult people, you know, I, it taught me a lot. It taught me, in fact, I believe that experience alone taught me more uh, than really any of my public education ever did. So get back home and I'm pretty much at square one again, you know, because I made a little bit of money in, in the army during my training time. And it, as a reservist, you really don't make a ton of money. You only make, you know, the money when you're going two days out of a month. So I wasn't really making a lot of money. I was back at my grandma's house. Um, and, uh, you know, I said, you know what? I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm going to get an apartment. So I went down, uh, you know, got a newspaper, looked around, found a pretty cool little apartment, kind of a duplex, got that. And uh, that was the first time I had essentially lived alone. You know, I got out of my grandma's house. I think I was, yeah, I was 20 years old at that time. So I was pretty happy that I had made it out um, and, you know, was good, but I still needed to make money. I didn't have a lot of savings left from that training time that I had accumulated in the military. And so I began to, you know, again, work more odd jobs. You know, uh, I grew up in a town or city called Fort Wayne, Indiana, a population of about 300,000 people. So, I mean, there was, it, in that particular Midwestern city, there wasn't a lot of jobs. There wasn't a lot of opportunity and so I was like, man, I was just spinning my wheels trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I didn't like working uh, for anybody. You know, I, I came to work. I showed up on time. I did my stuff. You know, I, I geez, I worked as a cook. I did construction. I did, uh, gosh, I worked on uh, cargo planes, basically putting cargo on the, to airplanes. And I did all kinds of crazy odd jobs during my early and mid-20s. And the thing that I always kind of remembered is like, I was like, I don't want to continue to see myself doing this. You know, something that I didn't mention is that growing up, I had seen my grandma and mom, uh, specifically my grandma, uh, get fired from multiple jobs as a waitress due to the politics and the changing of managers and just the, the uneven nature of that business. So that was something that really stuck with me. I said, I have to figure out a way to make money uh, for myself. And I'd always been interested in computers since I was around 18. I got my first computer when I was 18. I begged my grandma to buy me one. I told her I would pay her back eventually. Um, and I, I, I guess I did, you know, 18 or, you know, 17 years later, I ended up buying her and giving her some money and all that stuff for everything she's done for me. But, um, <clears throat> you know, so I'd, you know, familiarize myself with the internet. My main thing is I wanted to download music. I wanted to listen to music. I didn't, I wasn't really uh, even aware that you could make money online. So at any rate, um, you know, I bounced around. Uh, and then um, around a year later, I ended up getting deployed. So this is right when, this is 2003, um, right when uh, the Iraq war started, our reserve unit got mobilized, which means basically that we got a call up from the, uh, you know, the government saying, hey, we need you. So we got mobilized to a kind of a little army base in uh, central Indiana called Camp Atterbury. We did some training there. Uh, and initially that training is only supposed to last like 30 days. They get you trained up, ready to go. You know, they train you on all kinds of stuff you might foresee in the Middle East at that time, you know, 
gas mask training, how to, you know, all kinds of stuff um, that gets a reservist ready to go overseas. And, you know, I wasn't, again, that wasn't something that I was really excited about. Um, you know, all politics aside and all that stuff, it wasn't something that I felt, even at that time, was a, uh, a, <laughs> a great idea for our country to be embarking in. And so, um, about 45 days into all this, we get a call, you know, the, our, our head commander gets a call saying, hey, we, we really don't need you in Iraq. Your unit, I was attached to a military police unit. They said, well, we need you over in um, Guantanamo Bay. And so I ended up spending a year um, doing uh, work over in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, which was pretty cool, you know, and all, all things considered, um, that whole experience wasn't bad. I ended up getting very lucky. I know a lot of people and obviously heard of a lot of people that have had, you know, obviously lost their lives overseas and have, you know, um, PTSD and all kinds of negative effects from, you know, going overseas. And I would have done it. I, I would have, you know, done my time, so to speak, had I, um, you know, g gone over there. But, um, so anyways, I got back home and I mean, and that is really when my real life, I guess you could say, my real adult life kicked off because when you're in the army, you kind of have a safety net. They're paying you, they're feeding you, they're making sure you have a house or barracks or whatever. Uh, but when you get back home, it's time to really get down and dirty and you have to fend for yourself. So I began to work, I began to do all kinds of stuff from home and you know, try to figure out a way to uh, get by and, and, and back to square one again. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of becoming a, a pattern that I was involved in where I would, you know, go to the military, you know, whether it was basic training, get a little bit of money, come back home and, and try to survive off that and then get deployed, make a lot more money, um, come back home, survive off that, work some odd jobs when that money ran out and really, you know, just begin to, to repeat that process. But at this point, I began to get a little bit more serious about kind of where I was going. So I began to read a lot of personal development books such as Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, which I just happened upon uh, when I went down to the library one day. So I used to uh, get a lot of books at the library, magazines, stuff like that and start to read. So I began the habit of reading um, right around the age of you know, 21, 22. I, I got a, a German Shepherd um, when I was 18 named AJ and I just wanted to always learn how to train him and always learn how to work with him and understand animal psychology and that stuff really interested me. So I'd go down the library every other day, get books on dogs, get books on, you know, how to train dogs, and then I would always find something else that interested me. So I came across Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and this is where things really started to begin to change. I began to, to know that and, and learn that your life can be controlled by you, that your life can be not just something that you have to do, but something that you really get to do, something that you should look forward to doing, not something that you have to wake up and go to work and punch a clock and then, you know, 20 or 30, 40 years later, you get a retirement pension and, and stuff like that. You know, so I began to know and, and, and learn that that type of life had gone away. You know, that was my grandfather's generation, not even my father's generation of people that would work at a steady job for 30 years and retire and get pensions and stuff like that. But I wanted more. I wanted a lot more. Um, and so... I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I ended up uh, kind of happening into an e-commerce business where uh, a friend of mine and his father were running a an e kind of an e-commerce business, eBay store selling self-defense products. And I ended up getting involved in that, kind of learning that business and kind of going through some pain periods with that. But that resulted in me opening up an e-commerce website that I still run today uh, that continues to make money. You know, we can continue to sell you know, six figures, $100,000 uh, of product each year. And I utilize that. I, I use that business via drop shipping. So I don't stock products or anything like that. So, um, you know, that was a great business to get into. And it was something that taught me a lot about how to make money online, internet marketing, email marketing. 
but I really never took that business 100% serious. I never really, I always looked at that business as something that um, was just something I was going to do, but that wasn't going to be the end all be all. You know, that wasn't a business that I was super passionate about. I'm not really super passionate about self-defense products and, you know, providing military and police batons to, to security guards and stuff like that. It was something that was paying the bills, but it wasn't something that I was really passionate about. And during all this time, I was constantly reading still, learning stuff online, um, not applying a lot of it, mind you, but I was learning a lot, reading a lot of blogs like stevepavlina.com was one of the first ones that I happened upon, um, Leo Babuda from Zen Habits, uh, I was reading a lot of his stuff. Um, and then, you know, I came across like Eben Pagan, I came across Frank Kern, I came across all of these, you know, well-known marketers and, and online gurus. And I would, you know, go on the warrior form and try to learn new stuff there. And it's just like kind of, kind of in that phase where I was really just spinning my wheels. You know, I was really just kind of not really getting anywhere. I was just kind of going what we like to call the shiny um, object syndrome where I was like, oh, I see this business. Let me try to do that. Or, oh, cool. Like he's doing this. Let me see if I can't maybe do that as well. And I really never got anything going other than my e-commerce business. So while that was running, I was still working odds and end jobs, you know, selling furniture, cars, you know, all kinds of, you know, stuff that I really wasn't passionate about and I really didn't like doing. And, um, you know, I ended up uh, during 2011 is when I met my my wife, Jamie. Um, and in 2013, we had our son, Alex. And that is the the changing period of my life. So like when you become a, a parent, you know, everything changes, not just what you thought might be, you know, the challenges of being a parent. You are actually just your life. If you're going to do it right and you want to do it right, your life changes so much. 180 degrees from, you know, being able to do anything I wanted at any time, you know, to, you know, basically being 100% invested in, you know, another tiny human being, right? So, like, I was like, well, all this kind of wishy-washy stuff that I was doing needs to end. You know, if my son's going to have an amazing life, if my family's going to have a, an amazing life, I'm, ne- I'm going to need to figure something out. So I was still, at this point, I was still running my e-commerce. I had ran, started to run an eBay business, and that was doing really well. I became a platinum, you know, what do you call it, power seller or gold power seller. I don't, I don't remember, but I was a power seller. I was selling a bunch of electronic products and you know, getting stuff from wholesale and flea markets and kind of doing a lot of arbitrage. And it was just, you know, a, uh, it was a grind. It wasn't passive income. And, you know, I was making some good money. Um, I made enough to buy my house in cash and, um, you know, all that. So we had our house, we had uh, my son who, you know, at this point was, when I bought my house, well, he wasn't even born yet when I bought my house, but, um, he came what two months later. So I bought my house in July. He came two months later. So all of this kind of stressful stuff, you know, they say that buying a house and having a child and, you know, moving and all that stuff is some of the life's most stressful events. And it, and it was, you know, it wasn't something that was easy, but, um, that taught me that I, I need to find something that is a little bit more sustainable, that doesn't require so much of my attention. You know, I don't want to be uh, a dad or a parent that is having to work, you know, 10 hours a day in order to support my family. I want to be able to work, you know, like Tim Ferriss, you know, in the four hour work week, which is another book that inspired me. Um, In fact, that was probably the biggest inspirational book that I've ever read at this point. Uh, at that point, I should say, because that really taught me a lot about things that I had known nothing about, such as outsourcing, outsourcing, uh, travel. You know, I wasn't really that big in the travel at that point, and I became big in the travel after reading that book. And um, you know, so that really taught me a lot. So I wanted to apply sort of a four-hour work week type of business into my life, and. Uh, 
one day, uh, I get a call from eBay. They basically said, hey, listen, you know, your store um, isn't meeting our guidelines, which essentially means that, you know, the business that I was in selling aftermarket electronics and stuff like that is a very, it's a business ripe with a lot of fraud. Um, there are people out there, unscrupulous people on eBay and Amazon and stuff like that, who were selling, you know, knockoff items and all kinds of other um, miscellaneous goods that weren't meeting eBay standards. And they flew under the radar, um, but you know, eBay decided they were going to crack down on a bunch of people in the electronic market, and I was one of them. And so they said, hey, Jason, I want you to provide all your receipts, all your purchase orders. I said, hey, no problem. So I sent them in and, you know, eBay basically told me to go fly a kite. And, you know, sometimes with big companies like that, you can run into issues. And I know there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that's happened to. And I was pretty upset. You know, I, I let myself kind of, you know, go into a, a little mini depression for three or four days, kind of saying, man, I just lost a really lucrative business overnight for essentially no reason um and so i was upset you know i was making a lot of money doing that it wasn't something i was really passionate about but i knew that it was a guaranteed way to make money every single day and week and month and so one day or one evening i should say i remember this day very very vividly i was uh went into the kitchen got some food and went into my office and you know at this point you know i was pretty upset, sulking, depressed, go jump into uh, a couple YouTube videos. You know, I'm, I'm floating around on YouTube and I'm always watching entrepreneur and passive income videos. A, a bunch of videos started popping up on Kindle publishing and, and self-publishing. So I started looking at them. I'm like, man, this is really cool. Um, because like, if you guys remember, I told you that I was always studying Okay, I was always looking and reading and, and studying ways to make money online in you know, 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11. I was always, always researching. In fact, actually, I, I'm sitting in Austin, Texas right now. We moved um, from Fort Wayne to Austin um, in September of 2015. But I was going through all my old notes and paperwork and something popped up. There was a course that I was taking that essentially showed people how to outsource ebooks and write ebooks and then publish them on you know websites and blogs and sell them for 27 or 37 or I don't know 17 whatever the price was and I want to say this site was called like niche profit something it was pretty cool these guys came up with it and uh, niche profit classroom I think is what it was called and that was basically like ebooks. And that appealed to me because I said, you know what, this is passive income. I can write a book or I can have a book written for me and throw it up there, you know, do some, you know, basic search engine optimization and really start making some cash. Well, sadly enough, I never really followed through with that business. And I have a ton of notes that I took on that course and I really liked it. But when I started watching those Kindle videos, I said, man, this is very similar to the niche profit classroom. This is really something that is uh, exactly like what they were teaching, except for it's utilizing the power of Amazon. And it, it's a lot easier to do instead of creating an ebook on, on its own and setting up a blog in your own domain and, a, you know, an email campaign like niche profit classroom was teaching. You know, all I had to do was write an ebook and or have a, an outsourced or ghostwritten ebook done for me, which I own the rights to, throw it on Amazon and let Amazon do most of the, the marketing and you know selling and payment processing, and then I would get paid each and every month. So that's essentially what those videos were showing you is like, hey, you know, and I was watching all these free YouTube videos. At the time, it was September of, I'm sorry, November of 2013, so there wasn't as much stuff as there is now. Um, and so I was just like going through every free resource that I could, you know, going through every single thing that I could to, at that point, you know, I, I had lost my business, didn't have a ton of cash flow coming in. And, uh, I was still like pretty, you know, upset, but I was taking notes, you know, I was going through all my notes and figuring, you know, this is what I got to do. You know, this is something that I, I, I want to take advantage of. This is something that I, I feel like can be a lucrative business. This is what I've been looking for. 
that was initially what popped through my head within watching the first two videos. So I began to formulate a plan. I said, you know what? I need to write my first book, okay? I don't want to invest in any courses. I don't want to invest any money into anything until I do my own thing and prove that this can work. So I I started writing a book on drop shipping, which it was something that, if you guys remember, it's something that I was doing, something that I was doing for and continue to do. So I knew it like the back of my hand. I, I wrote a book and the book title was Drop Shipping Made Easy, which I published in November of 2013. Um, and I threw it up on Amazon. I think the book took me like two or three days to write. I was, I was banging out on the keyboard every night, just kind of, you know, getting, getting my thoughts out there on paper. And so I got a, uh, the book written, I go over to Fiverr, I get my ebook cover designed. Um, and everything looks good. It looks professional. I, I go through, uh, some YouTube videos. I figure out how to upload my book to Amazon. I get it uploaded. I run a five-day free promotion. I believe you know five to seven hundred people downloaded my book for free, which I thought was cool. And then it began to sell. Now it didn't sell a lot, you know, drop shipping and that type of stuff. At least for my book, wasn't a, a big cash cow. It wasn't something that people, you know, were buying a hundred copies a day. But I said, man, if I can throw this book together, you know, and and do all this without really much investment. I can duplicate this. I can scale this business, you know? And so I began to hire some writers on Elance. I put an ad up and uh, really began to formulate book ideas. And um, it started out pretty slow. Uh, I came, you know, I was trying to hire writers. I really didn't know who to hire. I thought maybe hiring, you know, people that cost 500 bucks or 600 bucks would be the best route. Some of those people didn't turn out to be that good. So I wasted a little bit of money or actually quite a bit of money in my first month or two trying to figure it out. And uh, so then I began to really figure out that it's not really how much you spend in this business to to produce work. So again, guys, I want to, you'll learn this in the course, but a lot of the the books that I do are ghostwritten. And then I own the rights to that book. But at this point, you know, like, I wasn't someone that was really savvy in all of all of that. I wasn't really savvy in hiring people, but I began to learn learn it and began to really figure out who was good, who wasn't good, who I wanted to have on my team, who I didn't want to have on my team. So, began to get some really good writers on my on my team. Uh, began to get some good editors, really good book cover designers, which I was using Fiverr a lot. And in January of 2014, that is really when my business started to take off. This is really when my business started to, to, to scale to a, a really um, exciting height. It, it was something that, you know, I set my goals. I set my goals to, to make $50,000 a year in this business. I, I broke it down to the most minute level. I broke it down to this is how much I need to make a week. This is how many books I need to sell a day. You know, I broke it down really basic to make it manageable and tangible for me. So then I just began to publish a, a bunch of books. I began to, to have a bunch of books being written for me every week um, and book cover designers. And I began to just really perfect the process. And um, in May of 2014, I had eclipsed $10,000 a month publishing books on Kindle. By this point, I had probably 30 or 40 books. Um, and, you know, I was I was feeling really good. I was like, man, this is great. The more books that I do, the more money that I'm going to make. So I began to publish so many books and begin to perfect niche research and keywords and, you know, cover optimization and, you know, all that stuff. And so then uh, I did, that continued. That whole process continued. Um, I continued to go up every single month. And then in August of 2014, I had my biggest month. Okay, I had my absolute highest month, which was a little bit over $20,000. And by this time, I had like three Kindle accounts. Okay, so I had one Kindle account under my name and 
one Kindle account under my business name and another under another business name, which is per perfectly fine. But, um, but I was producing a bunch of content, a bunch of books, but something really grabbed me at that point. I said, you know what? This isn't necessarily the way to go in the future. I said, you know, this is something that uh, is not a long-term solution in the sense that producing a bunch of books every single week isn't a sustainable operation, okay? I began to produce very similar books and a, a lot of them were not up to the quality standards that I would recommend today. So that became a shift, a focal point. And by this time, I was making YouTube videos talking a lot about quality, what people need to do. I began to develop a following, which maybe is where you found me on YouTube. I came out with a course called K Money Machine, which was basically uh, in strictly a Kindle publishing course, which most of this course that you're going to get into is going to be strictly Kindle publishing. But... Um, I will talk a little bit more about some other avenues for self-publishing, um, such as you know, audiobooks and physical copy books and maybe some other platforms as well. But uh, that program did well. I got a lot of good response to it. Had a lot of people in the Facebook group. And uh, you're probably, if you're listening to this, you, you're probably one of them. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people got success off that course. And I began to coach people and teach people the methods that I used, the exact methods that I used to make money on Kindle. Um, but then, <laughs> kind of the dark period started to take place where people essentially were, were being very unscrupulous, copying, putting out very um, poorly written books. Um, a lot of courses were teaching people to write 3,000 word books and it, would, it just began, it be, be, became a mess. And, you know, I distanced myself from that. I really made a point to say, you know, look, from from now on going forward, we need to focus more on writing absolute premium quality books, which this course is going to teach you how to do and build an audience, not just build, um, you know, a quick get rich quick scheme, which is a lot of people were doing. Oh, let me flood the market with, you know, 200 books or whatever. Um, and just hope to capitalize on keywords and stuff like that. That is not what I want to teach and that is not what I recommend. I want to really get into a lot of producing quality. So I began to focus more on quality books. You know, I began to have books that were self-published books that were, you know, instead of five, 7,000 word books, short pamphlets, uh, 20 to 25,000 words building email lists, building brands, building trust with your audience. That was uh, the method um, that I began to use with my publishing business. And so that is what I've taught people since. And that's what this course is going to teach you amongst other things. And I began to implement audiobooks and, um, you know, create space, which is physical copy books. And that was making me additional, additional income. I began to experiment with uh, making books permanently free which was making me additional income via my email marketing campaign. So um, one thing that I will tell you before I wrap up here is that self-publishing on its surface is you writing books or having books written for you and then putting them on the market. But there's a lot of different facets, a lot of different uh, rabbit holes that you can go down to increase your income, which is what I want to teach in this course that you know, this business isn't just you publishing a book and then getting royalty checks. This book is, or this course will teach you um, a lot more than just how to do that. So, um, and I'm going to show you in another video kind of uh, what you are going to expect from this course and what you need to have in order to complete this course. But um, that is my background. And as you can see, and as you, if you can hear this, obviously, um, it is something that uh, is not a straight path. It wasn't, uh, you know, A to Z, a straight line path for me getting groomed to get into a book business or f for me having this kind of mentorship or successful, you know, family life that propelled me into becoming an entrepreneur, someone who, you know, I've taught people who are lawyers, I've taught people who are, you know, br br Brazilian jiu-jitsu experts that are, 
you know, black belts, I guess, that, I guess that's what they're called, um, that, um, you know, have huge academies and I've taught all kinds of other cool people from around the world self-publishing. And my goal for you guys is for you to be number one successful at this, but for you to also master this self-publishing game, to master how to become an expert self-publisher, to support yourself, to support your family, so that you can possibly even teach or that you can possibly even you know coach or you know do seminars or grow your own company, you know, just like I did. And if that's something that you want to do, if you just want to publish books. That's fine. You can make good money doing that too. So that's my background. Um, I appreciate you guys listening to this. Um, There's a lot more awesome content in this course that you guys are going to be going through. As always, take notes. Go through the entire course. This isn't a course that is filled with fluff and just erroneous information. This is going to be a course that every single video that I do Every single training module that you will go through is going to have essential information to make you more successful. Everything I do comes from the place of trying to make you, the person who purchased this course, more successful in this business. I have no ulterior motives. Um, As you can see in this course, there are no upsells. Okay, Um, I will be offering some coaching. Um, kind of a group coaching at some point during this whole deal but there are no upsells everything that you need is in this course okay so um, I'm not your traditional internet marketer I don't do huge product launches I don't do a lot of the kind of bling that a lot of people like to do um, I usually will quietly release my course and 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 have people get it by word of mouth and that's the way I operate Um, And that's just the way I do things. It's a little different from most people that you're probably used to. But um, I feel like that works best. And I built some amazing connections and met some amazing people and have some amazing friends uh, due to me being in self-publishing. And I think it's a large majority of that is because operating with integrity is always um, how I how I operate. I don't operate any other way. So that's it, guys. Um, I appreciate you and uh, go through all the videos and we will talk to you on the next module. Thank you.